to declare you this morning. I just stand. I stand.
your hearing a declaration of our faith that will become our reality be in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We are here that have overcome the world. And as your word comes into our hearts this morning, it gains root downwards, it bears full of us to the glory of your name. Amen. We are forever transformed by that word to the praise and glory of your name. For in Jesus' mighty name we have worshipped. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. And celebrate Jesus as you take your seat. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's good to see you this Sunday morning. Good to see you, Jesus. It's good to see you this Sunday morning. Good to see you, Jesus. That's how I can say it. It's not good to see anyone online. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going straight into the teaching for today. The title of the sermon is Seven Babel. Mountain Moon. And you know, the song that was sung was a so prophetic. It's so prophetic because it communicates the teaching for today's meeting. It communicates the idea of the, of the teaching in today's meeting. And I can say that the Kerimba music will work prophetically because I didn't know before the title was disclosed. They are prepared to sing the song. He says, I have overcome the world. It's such a powerful revelation. And I want you to pay a lot of attention because the truths that I will share this morning have the ability or has the ability to radically change your faith work. Are we together? Yes, sir. If you are to Bible, start to John chapter 16, verse 32 and 33. John 16, 32 and 33. And by 
the association with him, his victory is now their victory. Are we together? It was this revelation, because John the Apostle was present when Jesus made this statement. It was this revelation that made John to make a statement we know so well in the church. First John 5 and 4. First John 5 verse 4. First John 5 4. It says, For whatsoever is born of God, does what? Overcome the world. I need you. Let's make that together. One, two, three, go.
the title of our teaching team is a problem. Zachariah chapter 4, verse 6. Are we together so far? Yes, sir. Zachariah chapter 4, verse 6. Now, let me give you the background story around this because I know you know the text so well. You know, Zerubbabel, the meaning of Zerubbabel is born out of Babylon or drawn out of Babylon. Now, Zerubbabel was a ruler of Judea. He's from the descendants of David. And when the children of Israel were taken into captivity from Israel or Jerusalem to Babylon, under King Nebuchadnezzar, you know the story of Daniel, right? That's what I'm saying. I know the Bible story, you really that here. So when the children of Israel were taken out of Jerusalem into captivity in Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar's son lost the throne to Cyrus. Cyrus had been When Cyrus came, by the Spirit of God and by the intercession of Daniel, remember the Daniel's prayer, oh God, he gave an instruction that the temple should be rebuilt. And he started building the temple. But then for some political reasons, they stopped. Then Darius came and took over. When Darius took over, the Lord gave laid in his heart to release the Israelites from captivity, from Babylon. So when he released them, Serum Babel, being from the descendant of David, was made the ruler of Judea. Are we together? So he was taxed with the responsibility of rebuilding the temple. Now, young boy, coming out of captivity, with the responsibility of rebuilding the temple, there is a precedence before him that was not tried and failed. No. So he was scared. No. Are we together? Yes, and by to that time, you know, let me just say something just for passing information. You know, when you read the book of Ezra, Zachariah, and Haggai, all of them were, the same, were prophets at the same time. You know, the Bible looks like they are far apart. They were prophets at the same time. They were existed at the same time. And so Zechariah was moved by the Spirit and he prophesied this. He said, Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my Spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Next part. Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Thou shalt become what a plain. And he shall bring forth the headstone, thereof he shall his cry, Grace, grace unto it. Verse 8. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Verse 9. The last verse. The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hands shall also finish it, and thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto you. So everything I communicated about the victorious position is what God was coming to Zerubbabel. He said, Zerubbabel, why are you concerned? I am the one that gave the instruction. It is not by your power, not by your might, but by the Spirit of God that is upon you. Now, remember this is Old Testament. The Spirit was not living in them. The Spirit only came upon. And if the Bible can declare that for a man who the Spirit of God comes upon and live, lives, the mountain before him will become a level plane. How about the man who is born of God? Do you get the picture? He said, Zerubbabel, it is my will. I am the one that sent you. It is not my power or my mind. Ooh, are you great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you will become a plane. And Zerubbabel only had the spirit of God. But you who has the spirit within. It is a greater confidence you should have. Bring the other one. It is a greater confidence you should have. A greater confidence. That because you are born of God, you already have the victor's position. Now, come to Mark chapter 11, verse 22. Jesus now gives full expression to this revelation. Mark chapter 11, verse 22. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's read to 24 then I'll come back. For verily I say unto you that who 
whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which have said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. 24. What should we pray for? Go back to 22. Therefore, I say unto you, what means soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. So Jesus began to reveal the steps, the secrets behind walking in this kind of faith that we feel is everywhere. The consciousness. He said what? Have faith in who? God. Come on, say that again. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Say again, have faith in God. Have faith in God. So Jonathan's believe that the original translation is actually have God kind of faith. Now, whatever translation, have the God kind of faith or have faith in God, either one works. Because having faith in God is putting trust because God is with you. And having the God kind of faith is acting because you know God is with you. So, neither one of them applies. Jesus is saying that the first mindset to have this mountain over me is to have faith in God. God is with me. God deal with me. Hallelujah. God is with me. It's a huge revelation. That's why the name Emmanuel makes sense. God walking in our midst. God living with us. Have faith in God. And how does this even make any sense? I want to show you something. Can I? Psalm 114, verse 1. Psalm 114. When Israel went out of Egypt, the house of Jacob from the people of strange language. <laughs> Judah was his sanctuary, and Israel his dominion. The sea saw it and fled. Judah was driven back. Verse 4. Everybody did one, two, three, go. He says, because of the presence of. So David was speaking poetically about the events that happened when the children of Israel were led out of Egypt. He said, why did he see run? Hallelujah. He said, what happened to you mountains? Why were you sleeping? He said, the Lord was dwelling in Judah. So when Moses stretched his rod and said, let us go, the sea would not stay closed when the king of glory wanted to pass. Are we together? And if that is the revelation, it is also true about you. The mountain cannot stand still because you are coming with the greater one. Hallelujah. Amen. The greater one that lives inside of you are coming with the greater one. So it says, have faith in God. And this is where it starts. But then Jesus proceeds to tell us something wonderful. And this is the core of today's teaching. The key principle to give an expression to the faith that is within you. Verse on Mark chapter 11, verse 23. Mark 11, 23. For very, I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. And Jesus is revealing the great principle here that the expression of the faith in your heart is by speaking. Tell anybody, the expression of the faith in your heart is by speaking. Jesus says, Say unto this mountain, say unto this mountain, and anything you say will surely come to pass. If you say to this mountain, the mountain will want to move. I found out throughout scripture that there is nothing God wanted to do in, through, and for a person that He didn't get the person to first see it. <laughs> there is nothing God ever got to do or wanted to do in, through, and for a person that He didn't get the person to see it. Let's do a little analogy. Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 1. It's a long read. We're reading to verse 7. Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 1. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he carried me out of 
the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O oh Lord God, thou knowest. And again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause bread to enter into you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and bring down flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put bread in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. Verse 7. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, go to go. Verse 9. Verse 8. And when I behold, and when I beheld all, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. And if you continue to read, God continued to give instructions. Say unto this, say this again, when come and feed these bones and let them be alive. So God wanted to get the miracle to be done to the prophet. He told him, say like this. Say this. Say this. And as he was saying it, it was. Even God himself practiced this principle. The Bible tells us that out of nothing, the whole earth was formed. And what we see in Genesis was God saying, let there be light, and there was light. Let this be, and he saw that it was, and he became. Let this be, and he saw that it was, and he became. The principle of faith is to speak as you believe in your heart. God didn't stop yet. He also trained Adam in, in, in the way. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 2, and he called the man, and he called all the animals. Are we together? Yes, sir. Are, are you listening to what I'm saying? Yes, sir. He called all the animals. And whatever Adam called them, that is what they were. Whatever he called them, that is what they were. And then when he brought the woman, go to Genesis 2, verse 18. When he made the woman, he didn't tell the woman what she would be. He didn't call her anything. The Bible says, and the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help me for him. And out of the ground, the Lord formed every beast of the field. And every follow him there and brought them unto Adam to see what he would do what? He would do what? And whatever Adam called every living creature, that was their name thereof. It was established. Anything he said was established. Twenty. Okay. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fall of the dead and every priest of the field. But for Adam there was not found and help made for him. Verse 21. And the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept and took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. Verse 22. And the rib which and the rib which the Lord had taken from man made a woman and brought down to the man. Verse 23, my empathy. And Adam said, This is now what? And flesh of my flesh. She shall what? Oh, my man. And from that day, she was woman. Till today, you are called a woman. Because Adam called you a woman. If Adam called you a fish man, you will hear this one. Are we still there? Everything he said, I want to show you somewhere else. Not to tell you chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 7. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 7. But the Lord said unto me, so when the Lord appeared to Jeremiah the prophet, he said, Jeremiah, I want to send you. I said, before, I born, before you were born, I knew you, and I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Is that true? Then Jeremiah said, Ah, Lord, I'm a small boy. Ah, Lord, you, you know, there are some prayers that they may be sincere. But it's not the will of God. Listen, I want to say to you again. 
There are some prayers that may be from the depth of your heart, but it's not the, the will of God. Jeremiah said, Lord, I am but a small boy. Look at what the Lord said. But the Lord said to me, Say not, I am a child. Come on. Say not, I am a child. For thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Verse 8. Be not afraid of your faces, for I will be to deliver thee, said the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody did hear that. He said, I have put what? My, word. my words in your mouth. Is it your Bible with you? Come on now. Are you living or you are dead? Yes, sir. Is it your Bible with you? Yes, sir. Is the Bible what? The word of God? Yes, sir. He says, I put my word in your mouth. Tell the neighbor, the Lord has put his word in your mouth. The Lord has put his word in your mouth. Look at what's there. What's the word will do in his mouth? He says, See, I have set this, this day over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down and to build and to plant. This is the reason why God was offended at the utterances of the children of Israel. This is the reason why the Bible says every man will be judged by his words. Because your words have implications in the realm of the spirit and you do not even know it. This same principle you can see it in the same thing. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. Demons 
wait for men to say things to carry out those things. Because whether it is true or not, in the realm of the spirit, the principle are right. So if you say it, you are a spirit, is that true? You live in a body. Can you see your spirit? Can you see the realm of the spirit? So things are happening. This is why the words are powerful. Say my words are powerful. So I know God is with me, and because God is with me, I speak. Now let me tell you something fascinating. You know, using the reference of Abraham, calling himself Abraham. According to medical science, there are three major organs that give you balance and stability. Three major organs that give you balance. One, your brain. This is why any damage to the brain, most times leads to paralysis. Is that true? Two, your heart. That's why when someone gets cardiac arrest, it's always, it ends up with paralysis. Is that true? Three, your inner ear. Tell your neighbor, say your inner ear. Your inner ear. If you go to your hospital, if, you have, if somebody ever faints and a doctor wants to diagnose first, these are the three things to diagnose for. The state of your heart, your brain, brain scan is always allowed, and your ear, your inner ear. So every man has two ears. According to the anatomy of ears, your ear, there's an upper ear which you use to hear from outside, external sound. And there is the inner ear which you use, which gives you balance. Glory to God. Don't say this by another class. Don't worry, just one. Now, let me use a humorous example that you can relate to to understand what I'm saying. When you are in the shower, when you are singing, you think you should go for I know. Is that true? Is that true? Yes. But if someone is recording you and plays the recording to you, when you listen, you can't believe you're the one singing. Is that true? Yes. Maybe not you. Maybe somebody you know. You recorded it and played it for the person. When the person hears, you can't believe that this is their voice. You know why? Because the outer ear hears external sounds. The inner ear hears what you see. Is that true? So what people say to you is not as important as what you say. So here's what the devil does. He says to you, oh you, you too, you want to try and succeed. Then you, you heard it externally. You now take it and say, ah, I will not succeed. You have internalized it. As it is biologically, it is true spiritually. You have upset your balance in faith when you repeat what the devil is saying. This is why God gets men to speak faith, not on belief. Are we together? This is why it is important. We speak the faith that we believe. Now, go back to um, Mark 11 23. Go back to Mark 11 23. Mark 11 23. It says, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea. And shall not doubt in his heart, or shall believe those things which he said, which are not to pass. He says, whoever shall say to what? The mountain. But you know what we always do? You know, when I say this, when we read this, some people think it out, but I've been saying to the mountain. <laughs> you have been saying to God. <laughs> All the time, you have been saying to God. Oh God! That's all you have been doing. And let me, let me give you the perfect picture of this. When the Israelites came out of Egypt and they stood before the Red Sea, Moses turned and said, Lord, will you deliver them? You know what God said? God was disgusted. The way he replied him, he said, Why are you praying to me? Turn and stretch your rod before the sea and let the children of Israel pass. Because once God has revealed something once, his will is already known. What you do is face the mountain. And continue to say to the mountain, You mountain, move. And as you say it, the mountain will move. And we don't say it when we have seen the mountain move. We say it to see the mountain move. 
<laughs> and we do not believe when we see the mountain move. We believe that the mountain moves. The Bible says that if you go to 24, Therefore, I tell you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them. And what? Come on now, read it. Is it not a Bible? Everybody, read one, two, three, go. shall believe. He says, believe that you receive them, then you will have it. You remember what I told you last week about the creation? Is that true? That God first established in the realm of the spirit, then he began to manifest in the physical. That if you read Genesis 1 and Genesis 2, it looks like creation was born twice. Because there was a spiritual declaration of the reality, then the physical manifestation started after. So as you continue to say to that mountain, as you continue to stay to that mountain, in no short time, that spiritual reality now becomes a natural reality. Let me make it more relatable. How many of you believe you're saved? Okay, don't raise yourself, don't make a question for that. You believe you're saved, right? Is that true? Are you not confident? <laughs> When they take the donation, don't say Jesus is coming again. <laughs> Do you believe you are saved? Yes, sir. Do you believe you have eternal life? Yes, sir. But guess what? When you were led to pray and you believed in salvation of God, let me put it this way. Salvation that we speak about is the transformation of our earthly bodies. This one to celestial bodies. It is a translation from this realm to a new earth and a new heaven with God. The Bible now says that if you believe, the Spirit of God has been given to you as a deposit for the days that are to come. So when we say Christ in me, the hope of glory, there is a future glory that we hope in. But Christ in me is the assurance of that glory. Now, by the strict definition of what we have said, it means that you don't have the salvation the Bible speaks of yet. Glory to God. But you have never seen it. The day you gave your life to Christ that did you feel a certain way? Did your body start shaking? You now lamentated. Then the heavens opened. They now said, Now you have been saved. Welcome. Then you now said, Is that what happened? No. As you are here now, you believe that you have received. Then you will see the salvation when the trump of God sounds. Glory to God. Amen. So we believe first before we see. We don't see, then we believe. If it is true for saving faith, it is true for charismatic faith. The story that was used here for the illustration was Jesus and his disciples. He went to a tree, he wanted to eat from it. And when he went there, he saw it looking right, the leaves looking great. But when he went, he saw no fruit. And then he said, No man shall ever eat from you again. Is that true? Yes. Then he walked away. He and his disciples. When they came back, Peter said, Ah, Master, the thing that you caused, it has withered. You know why he said that? Because when Jesus said it, nothing happened. Yeah. Nothing happened. They were observing. Then they now walked away. When he came back, he saw that the word that Jesus, Jesus said it and gave it, he walked away. He came and saw that what Jesus said, you know why he recognized it? Have you ever wondered that somebody recognized it particularly? It's because they kept it to their heart. God said something about this thing. It didn't happen. Then he walked away. Then when they were coming back, he said, look at that thing. Look at that thing. That thing which you spoke about. It has been that Jesus said, have it in God. And let it go. If you say, so he was not teaching a principle he didn't practice. He said, if you say to this mountain, be moved and don't doubt in your heart, that thing you have said will surely come to pass. It will surely come to pass. You know the sad reality? You that has the Spirit of God, you don't believe in those things. Unbelievers believe in it. Some of these most successful in this world, they were saying they will be what they will be. 
I descend into the beginnings because the principle applies in the realm of the spirit. And whether men are living, all men are spirits. You are just regenerated and alive. That one spirit is dead, but still a spirit. Get to God. So if you continue to say it long enough, you will become a light. How much more you ask the spirit of God that was in the beginning, the spirit of life. The Bible says, life and death have been in your tongue. Choose life. Choose life. Choose life. Choose life. You know, I was having a conversation with my wife while I was praying for this teaching, and I told her, I said, you know, sometimes when you walk by faith, God helps us and we don't know. I was thinking back as to how I met her, I have a married her, and so many things have happened in our ministry and in our life. And I said that any time something wants to happen, God gets me to start saying it first. Start saying it. So as early as as early as 2013, when I was when I was running up my service here, I began to tell I began to tell those that were around me. I said, if you see my wife, she's going to be happy. You know the worst part? I'll, I'll, I'll just let the dangerous nation. Let me dangerous. So I was if you see my wife, she's going to be light. Her fairness will be glorious. She'll be so beautiful to look upon. Wow. I said she'll be the pride of her husband. So I was just saying it to them and saying it and saying it and saying it. So when the Lord said, I learned of the fast forward and then I met my wife, we're, we're, we're not friends, that was her mentor. <laughs> and I was mentoring her and everything. You know, when the Lord said, ask them if it is out, he said, ask that out. From that moment, I started making church. Listen, the Lord was reminding me, he said, you see, I started making church. I said, see my wife. I will call my friends. I said, see my wife. I do not even ask that. I'm not saying what the Chinese people look at. I do not even ask that. I was just looking back in retrospect. I was saying, see my wife. See my wife. See my wife. Just see my wife. <laughs> even when we get to man. Even when everything, everything, I remember the baby. The Lord said to Matthew 22 1. And the king made a feast for the son. A wedding feast for the son. I said, the Lord will make a wedding for me. It will be like the king's wedding. And that's what I kept saying. The Lord will make a wedding for me. It will be a king's wedding. The Lord will make a wedding for me. It will be a king's wedding. <sighs> Even my church service, the church service, there was overflow. Church, not to be said, church. In our wedding, there was overflow. And when I met my daughter, I said, she thought I was joking. I said, we leave the house to live before. When it was time to leave the house of marriage, the apple. And one of my friends, I will call his name because he can be my Joshua Kessena. When he came to my house, <laughs> in, when I was in Abuja, he did this. He talked to God. He said, this is one of it. Because when we were together, I used to say those things. He said, this is me. And the following year, he got married. Listen, I'm not telling you to excite you. It's not as much as The things I'm teaching is the word of God. Now, it's not that you start engineering things. No. The word of God in your heart. Once the desire, I taught you already, you're not listening to the sermons. The word, the Lord is the one that will activate what in your heart. By his word. Once the word is turned up, don't stop saying it. This is a key principle to overcoming doubt. Even if there is doubt, you say it. I told you before that the way to overcome temptation is not to say in your mind, it's to speak. And you will not do it. That's not going on. You are concerned because you care what people will say. So your life has not struck you down. I will not. This is not who I am. This is not who I am. This is not who I am. You say, and then you will see it. On Wednesday, by special grace of God, we will still continue. I will teach you how to conquer doubt. Because as long as you walk in faith, doubt will creep, creep, creep in. But this is what believers don't know. The devil wants you to walk in doubt. So that once you doubt, whatever you started, it will stop. And this is this is the saddest reality. Anything that stops, like it's a spiritual set, it has to start afresh. But many believers don't know that. So many things that you are activated by faith, you stopped it by yourself. Then you want to start from where you stopped. 
Sorry. But let me tell you something. Don't stop saying it. This is the last thing I'll say about the top of my head. In Psalm 23. You know Psalm 23 is not a prayer, right? It's not David praying to the Lord. It is a psalm of faith to the Lord. Not, it's different from asking. He was saying. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. His, his declaration is this. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He says, he prepares a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You know what you and the believer does with that word? In spite of obvious contradictions, the Lord prepares a table for me in the presence of my enemies. This is what you say. You say, oh Lord, prepare a table for me. Eh, 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 eh. The Lord prepares a table for me in the presence of my enemies. Do I walk to the body of the Son of the I fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. They comfort me. The angels of the Lord, they accompany me all the days of my life. The word of God is revelation to sponsor what you say, not to take back to him. Because when he says it, his will is already established. Your own participation is to speak. Are you just looking at me? Begin to pray in the language of the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. Declare. Declare as for them. Declare as for them. Declare as for them. Declare as for them. Mante Rokobaya. Shabbatata. And Lucifaliata. In spite of the seeming obvious contradictions in my life. I am a victim. It doesn't change my identity in Christ. Make that a prayer and a declaration. I will win. This too shall pass. In the mighty name of Jesus, I live above my love limit. My needs are met. I am guided by the Lord. I never live in confusion. By the Spirit of God in me, I have access to divine wisdom. Great is the power of God that brought in me. Great is the glory of God that brought in me. Men see His glory and they attest to the fact that God is with me. That God is with me. That God is with me. Every prophetic one that the Lord has spoken concerning me will not fall to the ground until there is a performance. Until there is a performance. Until there is a performance. Don't darkness powers here and don't darkness the people. His light breaks forth upon me. His light breaks forth all around me. I am not subject to the economy of this kingdom. I am subject to a higher economy of a greater kingdom. I am not of this world.
places. Glory for shame. I'm changing places. I rebuke anything that will come to 
take out of what you have blessed. And I pray grace is multiplied on them, especially their finances in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's of us lift up our feet and go ahead and say one of prayer. Remember, it's called a donation. It is, a, it is part of your Christian consecration. Just say one of prayer for selling the seed in your hands. Thank the Lord for the privilege to give. Father, I pray for every hand that is lifted up. I declare, declare, declare that none shall drop down with lack, but shall continue to abound in plenty. Unto every good work, to the praise and glory of your name. Receive of us with all these tokens that we use for the focus of the gospel. And may men give unto us a good measure. Press down as you feel over. Shaking and running over to the glory of your name. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. But with Jesus, we are discussing our friends. Hallelujah. Just in case. 
tickets you are shy, you can meet me after the service. If you like to be added to one. So this is a special announcement for all our prayer clusters. I am I I think I spoke with uh, the leaders of the prayer clusters and some of them reached out to the group. There are some that haven't. So for those that haven't that don't know about this new development, we'll be praying first week and last week of every month on Thursdays. Everybody. So you just meet with your group and figure out the time that works best for you. Hallelujah. So that that way we ensure that we are consistent with our uh, with our prayer. Praise the Lord. And then we would have also have a fiscal meeting any day within the world. So that one would be left to the various practices that we decide when we would have their fiscal meeting as well as their personal emergency. So we are going to do like Pastor Faith did last week. Bring out your phones, everybody. Bring out your phones, bring out your phones, draw your sword, open your WhatsApp status. Are we ready? Yes. Are we ready? Yes. So we're writing, I am born of God, therefore I am victorious. I am. Media TV, I'm not exempted. I know this. So you repeat after me, say, Jesus! 